Hello, welcome everybody. My name is Josh, and today I have a very special uh, guest joining us for this episode of What's Up Fandom. I have Matt Beans, who is the executive producer and uh, writer for Trolls, colon, Trolls Tokyo. Hey guys, good to see you. Hey Josh, how are you? Uh, not bad at all. We're, uh, I think we should call it Trolls Colon. You just want to hear the colon. I just want to hear the colon every time. <laughs> we really do want people thinking about colons mm-hmm. when they think about trolls. I mean, I do. Whenever I think trolls, I go colon. Um, <laughs> no, it's, it's funny. We, we do a we do a podcast. Like we we are friends with another podcast, and they're called Nerd On, but they have an exclamation point after on. So yeah. whenever I intro them, it's always Nerd On the podcast because like they've got that exclamation point. So you got to yeah, yeah. put that emphasis on it. Is there um, for a reason? Exactly. Like, you wouldn't just put like you, there's no like wandering exclamation points no. in the wild. Mm-hmm. Um, so uh, we're gonna talk about uh, trolls colon trollstopia. <laughs> we're done with that. We're gonna talk about trollstopia, um, and it, it releases November nineteenth on Hulu and the Peacock Network. So today you can actually go and watch these episodes. Um, and DreamWorks was nice enough to let me check out the first eight episodes of the film. The, the, the film of the series i had to watch the film too because i watched it when it first came out and then i was like i should probably watch world tour again just to get myself in the mood for everything so i had to watch the i watched the movie again and then we watched uh trollstopia um so matt just uh just for our, our listeners who may not be familiar with some of your work can you tell us a little bit about yourself yeah uh in terms of work i I got a film school in Florida State uh, around 2006 and then got a job working as an assistant at Robot Chicken. Uh, I was Seth Green and Matt Senreich's assistant for a few years. And then Were you in any of, of those wonderful little bits where they, you know, kill the writers and everything? Yes. Nice. Actually, m- my first sort of foray into the being involved in the making of the show was uh, this sketch called End Memoriam, where they look back at all the crew members who make Robot Chicken who died in the past year. And then the gag is that Matt and Seth weren't happy because there weren't enough deaths. So then they pick up swords off their wall and various blades and they start killing people in the crew. And I'm the first one to die. I come oh, in congrats. Like coffee right at that moment. And yeah, it was, a, my mom was especially proud. Uh, <laughs> And um, so, so yeah, so I worked there as their assistant and they're just fantastic people and kind of carved out a spot for me to start writing on the show while being their assistant. And then that gradually evolved into me just being a regular staff writer for Robot Chicken for a number of years. I did that. Uh, and then there was a guy, uh, Brendan Hay, who was a writer on that show, who um, was the showrunner on Crudes TV, the TV show Crudes, Dawn of the Crudes for DreamWorks. I went and wrote for him and that started my relationship with DreamWorks and kind of transitioned me into being the executive producer for the Trolls TV show. So I did Beat Goes On and now I'm doing Trollstopia. Nice. And uh, also, I guess we can go ahead and pimp it out too. Uh, the Crude's new age, or is it new new age? A new yeah, age. I think that's uh, right. Yeah. A new age comes out on Wednesday. Is that correct? Is it already this almost Wednesday? Thanksgiving? Uh, the twenty fifth, right? Yes, that's right. That's My right. My goodness, that's... Thanksgiving's next week. <laughs> Jeez. <laughs> um, yeah, so it comes out on the twenty fifth uh, in theaters and on demand soon. I'm really I'm excited sure. about it. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, yeah, that one, I'm, uh, I hadn't watched The Croods until this year. Like, this was the year of, uh, oh, hey, I'm stuck inside all the time. I can't leave. Let's watch some things. So I watched The Croods, uh, and it's like, oh, I pleasantly, in, like, I surprisingly enjoyed this movie. It's so, delightful. Yeah, I, I'm ready for the second one. Yeah, it's funny. It's got heart. It's beautiful. Yeah, it's got everything. I, I thought it was great. Um, so let's kind of talk about, uh, before we get into uh, Trollstopia, so you did the beat goes on. Um, so how did that kind of like 
come to place? Like, how did that kind of fall into your lap? Was were streamers like, you know what? We did the first Trolls movie. It did really well. We want to go ahead and, you know, continue this. Because um, I've noticed that that's what DreamWorks does a lot. Like, there's a lot of spinoff uh, yeah. versions of movies. And, like, I think right now you guys create more animated content than pretty much anybody. If, I mean... They make a ton. For a while there, I... I... I have to believe that that was true. I, I think other uh, producers are are catching up, but yeah, they generate they crank out a lot of material, and most of them are uh, spinoffs from franchises, uh, with some exceptions. Yeah. I don't know if you saw Kipo, uh, but yeah, it was a yeah, we've show. had Rad and Bill on quite a few times, yeah. uh, and Troll Hunters and everything like that. Yeah. Like, yeah. Um, uh, a lot of, cause I mean, yeah, I think, you know, when I think, you know, animated, you know, series, uh, mm-hmm. it's usually DreamWorks that I think of just because there's so much of it. Yeah. Um, and I mean, whenever you just turn on Netflix and I, I yeah, bet if you type right. in DreamWorks, it's just, it would just oh, oh, everything yeah. there. Yeah. Um, uh, yeah. So uh, was, was that just kind of, you know, what it was? They were like, hey, we want somebody to kind of do this. Yeah. I mean, they, you know, getting getting the the ownership of trolls was was a whole operation that's been developing for a really long time at DreamWorks. Um, and so once they got that, they then figured out how to turn it into a movie and this was back before the first movie came out they already knew that at this point they had invested so much into making this franchise work yeah. better do a tv show to follow up fortunately the movie was great and people loved it and it found an audience so it justified there being a tv show um i was probably not the first name on their list but um you know they tried different takes on what a Trolls TV show would be. Initially, I think there was an idea that it would be very like Trolls and Bergens heavy, uh, like focus on that relationship between the Trolls and the Bergens. After the movie, they're friends. So then where does that go? And, uh, but after a while, it really seemed like the most interesting stuff was happening right in Troll Village. So let's do a series based, you know, that, that, that really focuses on, in on that. And I had a, a pitch or a take on how that would feel and how that would work that they liked a lot. Um, so yeah, since I had already written on another one of their shows, they knew at least I could deliver the scripts. And, um, and so that was kind of my foray into getting involved in, um, in being the showrunner. I think the other feather that I had in my cap was that I had written for Robot Chicken and an essential element of Trolls is that yes, it's it's designed to be kid friendly, uh, but kind of the spice of it is that it's also irreverent, you know? So there's all sorts of moments, like just off the top of my head from the second movie Poppy's singing about trolls just want to have fun and then you cut in and she's shaving her legs and they're like Mm -hmm. covered in hair you know that's not a joke that you would do on a lot of uh with a lot of kids franchises but you do it in trolls and I think that the robot chicken thing sort of signaled that I could deliver on a reverent comedy nice so uh when world tour got announced like did they know that they were going to do a trollstopia like that was going to happen you know, right like after the fi- uh, after the film came out, or was it one of those things that it was kind of like on the back, like you didn't find out until afterwards? Like, how did yeah. that kind of uh, yeah? Go um, I was deep into Beat Goes On, and I think you know we were kind of coming to the end of producing that show, that version of the show, um, when. DreamWorks development approached me and said, you know, we'd like to do some sort of new version of the TV show or, or some extension of the TV show. Um, so it wasn't a given from the beginning, um, but the franchise sustained well enough and the show did well enough. People wanted to see more. So we got busy thinking about, okay, we know that World Tour is gonna introduce six tribes 
So how do you create a show where you take advantage of, of that? You know, the world's big now. You can't go back to just Poppy and Troll Village yeah. with just the pop trolls. It has to extend beyond that. And so Trollstopia was just something that I came up with as a way to keep everybody in one nucleus place instead of Poppy always traveling. Always having to, to go different, different places, city. yeah. yeah. And then it lent itself to um, thematics of people coming together, um, sharing cultural ideas, which seemed to be baked into World Tour Two. It was just like, okay, now we're going to raise the stakes and really put them in one place and see if they can get along and 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 live together. Uh, so it worked. It, it it was at first just a device to get everybody in the same place. And I was like, well, yeah, but this ties into the theme as well. Nice. And um, just kind of going off, like, the, like this series does take place, it's like what, like a few weeks after the events of uh, World Tour? Yeah, I'd, I'd say a couple months. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Uh, I was just trying to remember from like, because Poppy said something like in the in the first episode, like it's been like X amount of time she, she may have said i can't remember if I she, she said, said like exactly how long it's been or something but something but it's it, it, you're not wrong a few weeks would would work just as well you know uh but it but it it, it hasn't been but long. it's it's also troll time so i mean like yeah who yeah really exactly. knows how long like Look, troll time could be six four and a half podcasts. years like we, we don't do know four, four podcasts on this topic alone uh, yes. um but the, it, guys get ready for, for december it's it get it, that's that's all <laughs> december is going to be is just time trolls <laughs> um for uh but it's long enough for her to start getting concerned that they're not becoming friends with the other tribes fast enough um so they've been friends long enough for her to feel like we should be getting to know them better than we currently are um sorry while you were talking i just thought of uh, a, a terrible pun uh, so uh, instead of a, wink, uh, a wrinkle in time, we can call it a trinkle in time because they're trolls. Anyway, so <laughs> done with that. So it was terrible. It was terrible. It got stuck in my head and I was like, mm, no, it's bad. Um, <laughs> so, uh, so the point of this, uh, like, so what, like the crux of this series is uh, Poppy invites a bunch of the uh, delegate uh, ambassadors from these other troll uh, communities over to pop village so that they can actually kind of all become uh friends pretty much and you know continue uh so basically so they don't become acquaintances wasn't yeah. that a whole thing like acquaintances yeah. um yeah. so that they could actually stay friends uh and I, th I thought that was a really a really good concept because it's like yeah like, that's usually what happens in movies we'll have something and they'll meet and then be like all right bye so <laughs> they will never yeah. see them again yeah that's right. Uh, but, yeah, I, I thought that I thought this was a good a little thing. It was like, oh yeah, well, like, why not? We have these characters. I mean, and we're not using like the kings and queens from the from the actual you know lands and everything. Yes. We're getting their ambassadors, which I thought was a nice touch because it's like, oh well, then because I mean, it, you can't really have Poppy going off with uh, it's not Dare, Barb, Barb, yeah. Uh, with Barb and, you know, being all, you know, doing adventures like that, because that gets a little bit like, uh, you know, yeah. she's, she's got a, you know, a rock kingdom with Ozzy Osbourne to rule. That's so right. That's right. you can't really do all of that, but yeah. where it's like, oh, but we can have an ambassador. Then it gets, yeah. you know, then it makes it a little bit easier. Yeah. Yeah. It's, it, yeah. It's easier on a number of levels for one. Um, Barb is really the territory of the features and um, I don't know what the feature movies are intending to do with any of the characters they created but um, but when you use a character from the movies you have all sorts of restrictions about what they can and can't do because mm -hmm. they need to be thinking about the next movie that's going to come out. Yeah. But when you make it your own, you know, your own characters inspired by the movie, we have so much more flexibility with like doing interesting character arcs or their fates, like where they end up, uh, you know, does someone want to leave or does someone, you know, decide that they want to, uh, I don't know, uh, try living in a different tribe or, you know, there's all sorts of different things we can do because they're, 
characters we created. Yeah, like story. what if Synth wants to go on tour for a bit? You That's know, right. You can That's send right. her off and have her do whatever right. she wants. Yeah. Um, I do have the cast here. Uh, we'll kind of talk a little bit about the cast. I'm probably missing people because uh, there's a bunch of yeah. people in the cast. Yeah, there's so, so many. So uh, we've got uh, Poppy as Amanda Layton, uh, Branch as Skylar Aston, Aston, Aston? Mm-hmm. Pa- yeah. I'm going to butcher names too. Uh, Synth as... Uh, Vlad Camano. Camano. Okay. I, I was looking, I was like, I don't know how to do that. <laughs> <laughs> um, Cooper as Ron Funches, Biggie as David Flynn, uh, Holly Darlin as Megan uh, Hilty, mm-hmm. um, Dante Crescendo as JP Kalar- Carliac. Uh-huh. Carliac. Carliac also sounds better. Boss Baby on the Boss Baby show. Uh, yeah. Guy Diamond as uh, Shanti Christian. Christ- uh-huh. mm-hmm. um, Val Thunderstruck as Thundershock, uh, Lori Mayhew. Uh, Smidge, Kevin Michael Richardson, Satine uh, Frida Wolf, and Lowtown Jones, Michael Lee and Rowley. And I believe for uh, what is uh, Keenan Thompson reprises his role as. Little Diamond, right? Uh, it's Tiny Diamond. Tiny yeah. Diamond. How awesome is that? Um, yeah, that that was a huge thing when he decided to do the show, and um, he's worth every bit of uh, you know every bit of excitement that fans will feel about knowing he's going to reprise the voice is worth it. He lives up to all the anticipation. So funny. Nice. Um, and I, I butchered everybody's names, so uh, they'll never be on the podcast. So, <laughs> like, hey, we did it, guys. We butchered your names enough. You'll never want to come on here again. Um, so, yeah, like, in each episode, I like, like, there's, it's a, uh, each episode, I think, other than, like, the first episode, um, is kind of divided into two separate, you know, mm-hmm. like, a, like an A and B. Um, yeah. And I like that. It's because it's not... It, it it does feel a little bit weird whenever you do have a an animated show that is um that is it's especially not taking itself like super seriously. Yeah. Um right. that has like a 30 minute episode or a 22 minute episode that's just mm-hmm. all one thing. It's not broken up. Yeah. Uh, but I like that you guys do that. Um was yeah. was that something that you guys knew that you wanted to do or was it just something that was like, was that something that DreamWorks was like, hey, we need you to kind of like break this down? Or is that something you guys knew that you wanted to do like from the beginning? When I got involved with Trolls on Biko Zon, it was always understood it was going to be an 11 minute show. Um, and uh, so we've stuck with that ever since. We've done a couple of 30 minute episodes, but uh, that's about it. Uh, otherwise it's 11 minute every episode and that continues to be troll, uh, true for uh, Trollstopia. Um, I like it too. I, what I like about it is that um, the show is very, I wouldn't describe it as fast because we actually m- kind of slow things down a little bit. You know, we take our time, let the characters hear a line of dialogue before they comment on it. Especially when we get to the emotional scenes, we really slow things down. So in that way, it isn't exactly as fast as a lot of you know, contemporary shows, but the plot moves are very fast. Uh, from, from working in Robot Chicken, one thing that I learned is like, you only have sometimes 30 seconds to set up a premise, pay it off, and then do a, a blow to get out of the, 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 the sketch. That's a lot to do in a very yeah. short period of time. So if you take six lines to explain what the premise is, the sketch is never going to make it. So we just uh, have adopted that on Trollstopia. Everything is moving fast. We're trying to hit a joke. Every other line, you know, boom, 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 boom. And so you don't have a lot of time to do plot. If they were 30 minute episodes, I don't think we'd have that kind of energy uh, because it would all be spread out. Yeah. I I did notice that like um, in, in the screener I got, there's the little timer that's ticking up at the top. And in the first episode, yeah. It's like everything is explained what we're going to do. And it's like a minute in. And I was like, yes. wow, that yes. yeah. usually that's like half an episode of us trying yeah. to figure out what we're doing. Yeah. Um, and that's one of the fatter ones. I actually think that the first episode, because we have so much work to do in setting up 
Trollstopia ex- reminding everybody what happened in the first movie, that's one of our, you know, fatter openings. The others are much more lean than that, you know? Yeah. yeah. Um, I, I will say, like, watching this, I was like, okay, this is going to be, you know, really kiddie and everything like that, which, I mean, I'm not opposed to. Um, but I was like, okay, I, it's going to be, you know, one of those. And then I watched it, and I'm like, all right, I think – episode three like that like part like i think it was like branch goes deep or like branch yeah. dives in like branch underwater, yeah branch underwater. like that one may be one of my favorite ones just because like i liked the gag like the whirlpool gag and everything yeah. like that i thought that was great i was like i wonder if they're gonna go back to that and then it just kept going back to them like <laughs> nice i like those callbacks those are my yeah. favorite yeah. um so yeah i thought that was really good um and then you know but yeah like what would you say like he explains when he goes to meet Poppy, he explains the problem, and it's like immediate. And you're like, "Oh, well, that's that's the issue." And I, it's like thirty seconds, and you're like, "Done." And yes. you're like, "All right, well, that's what the, that's the whole crux of what this eleven minute episode's going to be." And so the rest of it is just going to be a good time. Yep. And I I thoroughly enjoyed that. And yeah, it was it was good. That's what I say. I think it may be my favorite episode. Just and plus, yeah. it's like the techno trolls. Like, I so that's like I my know. Main, uh, that was a tough one that um, it was hard to figure out synth's character and what he, what his, what angle to play with him. But once we figured it out, he's quickly become a favorite character of mine. And I agree with you, like um, going down into Techno Lagoon is a visual feast. So uh, I wouldn't be surprised if a lot of people glom onto that one as, as a favorite because yeah. you get, you really get to explore a new world because you're going underwater. Yeah. I, it yeah. was, it was good. I did like that. Like if I'm going to go out, I'm going to go out and dance. Yeah. <laughs> like, sing, I'm like, that's good. That's good. Um, yeah. Oh man. Like it's a lot of clever, you guys do a lot of clever stuff on the show that I, I really find refreshing. It's not kind of like stale, like some of the stuff that we've, kind of grown accustomed to yeah. in animation um yeah. is there is there anything um really that kind of like jumps out at you that you really liked uh about um trollstopia so far yeah um i think that the the biggest especially in this first drop because you're working with a blank slate you know the the audience will have some expectations, but since they've never seen this version of the show, a lot of it's just a question mark. And so what excites me is delivering uh, 12 uh, new characters who are essentially main characters. And I would say that all of them are fun, you know, and, and, and different from one another, you know? Um, and that took a lot of work uh, to figure out. But now when, especially in the writer's room, when we're playing around with scenarios of man- matching Branch up with Dante or putting Poppy with Low Note Jones or R&B with uh, Synth, like all of these combinations are interesting. Um, and uh, this is because all the characters are fun. Um, so I'm, I'm especially proud that we don't have a flat character in yeah. the whole batch, which is great. And, um, and then I'd say other than that, like, I really like the episodes that shouldn't work. <laughs> so like the, the prime example for me is uh, finding out Tiny Diamond can't fart, can't glitter fart. Oh, yeah. And um, it's like a big, almost like after school special dad i'm weird because because i can't do this thing and then him learning how to fart on paper that whole episode should just be a dumb joke and we get a lot of laughs out of it but at the end it i find it to be a really warm story about a father and son connecting and supporting one another you know and i think it works on that level so that is something that i'm proud of is is making making a story like that come together and really pay off. Um, I don't remember like, uh, and we, we didn't really talk, you know, too much about the music, but the music very important in the series, Huge. just like in the entire troll franchise. Yeah. So it, it's one of those, like, I, I feel like it doesn't like you can not talk about the music because it's like, 
it's a troll series. You know, you're going to get music. It's not like, this is going to be the first troll series where nobody sings and dances. (laughs) um, Yeah, but one one thing is that on Beat Goes On, the fans got a song probably every other episode, and we doubled down, and you get one. Just about every episode Mm -hmm. has an original song in it. Um. Yeah, it's uh when you guys if you guys do another after school special, you need to do like that like the somber like na 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 music. That would be amazing. <laughs> yeah, okay. Just, I'll work on it. I'll just like it. just like somebody be like, So Poppy, I understand. Like na 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 Yeah, that I think they'd be great. <laughs> um so uh and, and again, um uh Trolls Colon Trollstopia uh premieres uh Friday, November nineteenth. So it's out right now, so you can actually go and watch it again. It's on Hulu and uh Peacock. Uh, is it the Thursday, Network Thursday November 19th it is November 19th but it's actually a Thursday oh today's Tuesday yeah <laughs> yeah Thursday November 19th Josh is gonna have to do some editing there um uh, fix that mistake uh so yeah Thursday November 19th you can watch it right now um the days I don't know them anymore I totally thought today was Wednesday Zero judgment. You are you are a picture of all of us right now. No yeah, problem. Thank you. Yeah. Well, that that actually is great for me because I have an audition due on Wednesday, so I'm like, ooh, got an extra day. Ooh, <laughs> good. That's good. Um, but yeah, uh, Matt, thank you so much for coming on. Where can everybody find you if they want to keep up with you social media wise? Uh, I'm really only on Facebook and only occasionally. That's kind of my primary thing. I these days I find. Twitter, too stressful. Instagram's re- relatively harmless. I just never got into what it. What about your Friendster account? Do you have your Friendster account still? Yeah, I still have a Friendster account. I'm pretty active. Active on Friendster, um, active on the MySpace. Uh, <laughs> what was that other one that was, it was kind of like Friendster, but I think everybody had a specific um, number. Yes. I know what, what you're talking that? about, but I can barely recall. It's been so long. <laughs> Yes. I don't remember what it was. Um, do you have like a cool GeoCities page that you want to promote? Yeah, or? yeah. Please come find my G- GeoCities page. No, I, no I'm, I'm pretty boring on social media. Uh, so really, it's either Facebook or come watch the show to get to know me a little better. Nice. And we'll put uh, links to the show uh, in the show notes so you can find everything. Uh, you can find me on Twitter and Instagram at Josh L. Kane. You can find the podcast on the Instagram at What's Up Fandom, on Twitter at What's Up Fandom PC. All of our episodes are available iTunes, Stitcher, Podbean, Google Play, Spotify, YouTube, and on our website, animationstationpodcast.com, because I haven't changed the name from the old podcast because laziness and money. Um, so, uh, Matt, again, thank you so much uh, for coming on. This, this is great. Uh, you're welcome back anytime, whenever you want to promote more troll stuff so in december when we want to do you know a, a, tr- a trinkle in time a trinkle in time yeah a trinkle in time i already we'll wrote come it back yeah. on we'll, we'll, we'll yeah. make it happen all right uh so a cool what's everybody. up fandom uh i'm josh i'm matt beans thanks bye everybody i'm at the leading authority on action poetic or using big words but it's right